record and then we can get started. Um, all right. Brianna, I don't see the full screen of your slides. I think you need to switch to the view. Okay, uh, where do I switch over? I'm not sure if you're saying. Just hit present. Or if you already did, just unshare and reshare the full screen. Okay, so let me reshare it like you were saying. So present mm -hmm. and then present full screen. Mm -hmm. And if you hit that that purple button on the bottom. Yeah. Is that working now? It doesn't look like it is. That's okay. I can share them. No problem. I'm just going to take that. your share. Them. No worries. Just sorry for our technical difficulties, everyone. I'm sure we are all no stranger to this happening. So I'm just going to go ahead and share my screen. Okay, and great. All right, good evening, everyone. My name is Sam Anthony, and I am the Senior Program Manager for the League of Women Voters of Pennsylvania. Thank you so much for joining us tonight for the first event of our 2024 Voter Education Series Ballot Box Basics. For your awareness, this webinar is being recorded. As an attendee at this webinar, your camera is turned off, so your face will not be included in the recording. A uh, quick reminder that closed captioning is available in Zoom. To enable closed captions on your screen, you can just click live transcript in your Zoom taskbar. If you need more assistance with closed captioning, I will drop a help document in the chat as soon as I am done the introduction. Um, and if we can improve accessibility for you in any way, please don't hesitate to let us know in the chat. We begin our time together this evening with a land acknowledgement. Colonial Pennsylvania boundaries were first drawn in 1681 over original nation's land. We in Pennsylvania acknowledge the land ownership of original indigenous peoples, including the Haudenosaunee Confederacy and the great nations of Pennsylvania, Erie, Iroquois, Muncie, Delaware, Shawnee, Ohio Valley, Susquehannock, and Lenape. We honor all original nations of the past and those among us today. The League of Women Voters is a nonpartisan nonprofit organization. Our state office oversees a grassroots network of 30 local leagues all across Pennsylvania. The League encourages informed and active participation in government, works to increase understanding of major public policy issues, and influences public policy through education and advocacy. To learn more about our work and to subscribe to our action alerts, please visit our website. I'll drop those links in the chat as well. I am so pleased to welcome you tonight to Ballot Box Basics, Information Every Voter Needs. We designed these webinars because we know that voting, government, and elections can be really complicated. In 2024, these monthly webinars will discuss important topics like registering to vote, mis- and disinformation, safety in the polls, and much more. Whether you're a first-time voter or have voted in every election you were eligible for, we think you'll learn something new. And you can see on my screen that our next ballot box basics will be on April 16th and we'll cover AI and mis- and disinformation. To watch previous recordings of ballot box basics webinars or to sign up for future events, you can visit the link in the chat that I will put in in just a minute. Throughout tonight's presentation, you are welcome and encouraged to ask questions using the Q&A function of Zoom. We will leave about 10 minutes for Q&A at the end of the event. You are also welcome to engage with fellow participants in the chat, but please note that we will only be answering questions from the Q&A tool. In addition to a recording, please note that I will be sending a copy of all the slides to the registrants on Monday morning. Stop my share. Tonight, we're joined by Amy Klesis. Amy is the League of Women Voters of Greater Pittsburgh's Director of Civic Education in Schools and the Community. A retired school counselor and licensed professional counselor, Amy's focus has always been on students. Helping people understand the gift and duty of participating in our democracy through voting has been her mission. At home with her husband in Robinson Township, they tra split travel between Colorado and Washington, D.C. to spend time with their kids and grandkids. Amy will be discussing the ins and outs of voter registration and voter processes this evening. And Amy, I will turn it over to you. Thank you so much. And it's just really great being here. And I appreciate this opportunity to share 
And so I will just get going here. And as we said, hold your questions and um, be happy to answer anything afterwards. Um, this presentation is entitled Train the Trainer, Registering to Vote Made Easy, but it's really about training others to register voters. Um, I know you're all experts at this, and um, that's so I so pretend you're you're thinking about how you would train other people because you're going to say, I know that. Um, and I'm sure you do. Uh, so the the um, learning objectives for this are, are learning tips to make voter registration with online or printed printed applications easy and also to provide basic voting and election information to address questions that you might get or concerns from new or young voters. Is my, is this little bar in the way? I'm trying to get it out of the way there. Is that better? Okay. The League of Women Voters, for anyone who's not a leaguer, uh, the League of Women Voters of Greater Pittsburgh is a nonprofit 501c3 nonpartisan organization, neither supporting nor opposing candidates or political parties. So we're all about the how, not the who. We don't tell anyone who to vote for. They ask us all the time. Um, or we don't, and we don't give personal opinions about parties. Um, but we will help you today to be able to register new voters and answer their questions. Our mission is to reach all eligible citizens and make sure they know they have the right to vote and to help citizens understand that our democracy is stronger when we all participate by voting. So let's see, does this going to click for me? Hmm. Hang on one sec. There we go. This bar is in the way. So what do you say when people tell you that they are not interested in voting? I've had people say, just they just simply say, voting is not for me. Um, and it's been a little more negative this season because many students have told us they don't trust government, which is pretty disheartening. So how do you uh, persuade eligible citizens that voting is really powerful and in their best interests? You ask them what issues are important to them. It's their issues and their lives. And we try to connect, connect that to voting for candidates who care about those same issues. And we do it at every level of government. So let's take a look at some of the issues that might come up as you talk to eligible citizens. We've heard about these um, particular ones from, from students. There's recent research from Circle at Tufts University. It's the Center for Information and Research on Civic Learning and Engagement. And they've been in business for about 20 years and have wonderful data. And they assert that college students care more about abstract issues like climate, gun safety, LGBTQ+, and abortion while young people who are working are in career technical schools care more about jobs, housing, and racism. So that's kind of an interesting split. They also have a statistic that say 75% of youth feel that they can change the world, but only 40% feel that they have the tools they need to do that. My cursor's going off, there we go. So the very first thing to do is to check an interested person's voter registration status. I have a link here um, on this on these slides. And um, as a poll worker, it just constantly amazes me that so few people understand how to check their, their status. Um, if they're active, they're eligible to vote. That citizen has previously registered to vote and they can vote with a regular ballot in the next election. Um, the, the, that that um, paragraph there shows you all the great information that you'll find when you do check out that registration uh, status. And then um, we, we try to do it on phones for students so they know that they can easily check it anytime. Inactive is use it so you don't lose it. And that simply means that a student has registered in the past, but um, their voter registration might have been purged. There are two easy ways to change inactive status to active so they may vote. 
For voters who have a listing of inactive, they can re-register to vote before the deadlines. And once approved, their status changes active and they can vote in the, in the next election. Or if time is short, they can go to their polling place on election day where the poll book notation should also be listed as inactive. And then the election workers will have them sign an affidavit that changes their status to active. And that enables voters to vote with a regular ballot, not a provisional ballot. Um, be advised there's a lot of misinformation around the purging of voter rolls right now. Uh, we're going to create a video to explain the real process. It takes two consecutive federal and state elections to purge uh, someone from uh, voter registration. So we'll see. we're will we going to try to do a video so to, to explain it because we know that these challenges are coming. And then if it's not listed, it means that that person has, that there is no record at the county election office that that person was ever a registered voter. And they, they need to register online or with a printed application before the, net, the registration deadline to be able to vote in the next election. So as you probably are well aware, different states have different rules. Uh, we like vote org. Um, if they, people can go there and find their state specific information, this graphic we made for out of a state college students to find information about voting. So who can register to vote? Qualifications in Pennsylvania, whoops, for every citizen must be a U.S. citizen for at least a month, 18 years old on or by the next election day, must be a PA resident for 30 days prior to the next election. And then for ID, you need a PennDOT ID or a PA driver's license or the last four dig digits of a social security number. There is a space on the printed application to check the box that says, I do not have a PA driver's license or social security number. And some people, especially re-entering, which is formerly incarcerated citizens, may not have approved ID. And you can uh, uh, really you know, direct that person to votewriters.org I think many in our organization know about this organization that provides resources like transportation or fees and helps citizens get the approved ID that, that they need to vote. And by the way, Pennsylvania does allow the registration of 17 year olds who will be 18 on or before the next election day. Okay, so through our college outreach, we've created a graphic it's right there called Three Choices. Um, for college and university students in Pennsylvania. So the first choice is they want to go home to vote. They simply use their home address and then be home on election day. The second choice, they want to stay at school but still vote in their elections at home, like municipal elections especially, or if it's a swing state. So they need to use their home address to register and then they will need to apply for a mail-in or absentee ballot. Close to elections, I'm sure you know this, both the online and downloadable voter registration applications have the mail-in ballot application included, so it's all one process. And then the third choice, they want to vote where they now live, here in Pennsylvania, so or where they get their mail. If they are from a different state or if they have never registered to vote, they need to check new registration. If they're PA residents living at a different address from their ho home address and they have previously registered to vote in Pennsylvania, they can update their voter registration. They must complete that entire form again uh, with the address where they currently re reside, and that is uh, number nine on the application. And this is a little in the weeds, but out-of-state students who do make choice three should cancel their previous registration in their home state, and that link is on votepa.gov. So the deadlines to register to vote for our April 23rd primary is April 8th, and then the mail-in ballot um, application deadline is April 16th. It's kind of, this is also sort of bad news, but also be aware that some states like Wisconsin are passing laws that limit, limit the eligibility of out-of-state students to vote. There's a whole lot of hoops they have to jump through in Wisconsin to be able to vote if you're out of state student. The League of Women Voters missions to make reliable voter and election information available to everyone. And so we know there's many citizens with a justice history or who are in jails or prisons and don't think they have the right to vote. 
Many citizens with DUI convictions in their past believe they've lost the right to vote, and many who are currently incarcerated don't realize that they can register and vote. So know the facts. With very few exceptions, most citizens in Pennsylvania are eligible to register and vote. There's a PA Department of State brochure for citizens with a criminal record, re-entering citizens, and incarcerated citizens, and that's at votepa.gov, and I have the link there. We have a fairly new uh, web page on our website that's called Voting Rights for Incarcer Incarcerated and Re-Entering Citizens, and it's, it's for uh, their families, too, to, to give this information to those folks. And these uh, we have a down that graphics downloadable, and also we have a new short video uh, that explains this whole process. So the little nuts and bolt part, completing the online or printed application. Um, you'll see there's two ways, and I'm sure you've done this a million times, but the the because um, the online application is easier with a PA driver's license or pen.id because the signature is on file uh, for each of these, if the person wants to register with the last four digits of their social security number, they can upload a signature if they're registering online. But we usually suggest they use a paper application. It's just a lot easier. They don't have to fool around with a signature because their signature will be in the declaration box on the printed form. And that's what we do with most students. Um, and they seem pretty, pretty okay with that. Uh, only one form of ID is needed, and as I said, closer to the election, close to each election, a person who reg registers online or with a printed application can also apply for a mail-in ballot in that same application. We have a, a short video uh, that I wanted to show you, just the beginnings of. This is a L this is a, our our league's video. There's also a video the PA State Department has. It's about seven minutes. I don't. I think we have found students that are very good at doing forms, but we we made this video anyway, and it's kind of. Let me just see if I can get this on real quick. This is an. Uh, the I lost campaign it. Is getting a jolt. Oh no 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 no! Sorry, wrong one. Try that again. Get rid of that. I click too fast. This is an instruction video for completing the Pennsylvania Online Voter Registration Application by the League of Women Voters of Greater Pittsburgh. Please pay attention to the due dates for registering to vote. This site is available in English, Spanish, and Chinese. For question one, make sure you legibly write your first and last name the way they appear on your ID. You may use your full middle name or just the initial. So that just gives you a little idea of uh, how that video goes, and it's a three-minute video. All right. So we also, we used to have these Word documents with instructions, but now we use this annotated um, application with little speech bubbles um, that we find is a little bit easier. You can copy these from our website and uh, make it a double-sided uh, form. And it, it it's an easy way to explain sort of some of the details of, of voter registration. Um, so the, the big change when they went to the two page is that the declaration's here on the second page, which is so important. And they can just ignore that mail ballot request at the top if they don't wanna do that. And I have links there to the actual application and to this um, instruction sheet. And then if, it, if an individual is already a registered voter, the mail-in application alone can, can be downloaded. And um, this graphic again shows sort of that detail. Um, everyone knows that it is easier to apply for a mail-in ballot than a, an absentee ballot, but the ballots themselves are exactly the same. Uh, Act 77 allows Pennsylvania voters to apply for a mail-in ballot for any reason, and um, it is easier to just use, uh, to do that, um, especially if you're using that new regis uh, voter registration form that has it in, in the section 12. 
So let's see what else. It, the other thing I just wanted to say, it is important, as you know, there was just a court case today to make sure that mail-in ballot counts. We've had, I think in 2022, 10,000 uh, voter, 10,000 mail-in ballots were thrown out because people did not write the correct date on the outside envelope or didn't sign their name or whatever. And the court case just came in today, I think, third U.S. Court of Appeals, and they upheld rejecting that the, uh, the mail-in ballots that don't have the correct signature or, or date, um, which is a, not great news for us, but it is going to be appealed, I understand, if that's correct. Um, on our website, on our webpage, we have a mail-in webpage, and we do have those the new the way the new materials look so i've seen it in a lot of places but it's on there if you want to take a look at how they are using yellow to highlight what uh, voters have to do and this last um, line here is an explainer the annual mail-in request it's very confusing ruth has a great explainer and that's had about a thousand downloads so i know people are confused about that up here it up here it says, um, how to do you want to choose a political party? When we register students, they are very confused by this. Um, so a lot of people aren't sure whether they should join a political party or not. Uh, in Pennsylvania, it's especially important to, to think about this because our primaries are closed. You know, the primary election is the first and most important election. It happens in the spring, and political parties choose their candidates for the fall general election. But what does closed really mean? So when registering to vote, citizens do have the option to enroll in one of the two major political parties in Pennsylvania, Democrat or Republican. The spring primary is closed to anyone who's not a member of the, one of those two major parties. So in other words, the closed primary is where Democrats choose Democrats on one ballot and Republicans choose Republicans on a, on a different ballot. And then the winners will be found on a single general election ballot in the fall. We hear people complain that they don't like the choices that they have in the general election, but hardly anyone votes in the primaries. So the real choice is in the primary where about 80% of candidates are chosen. We have a new video linked there. Um, and, and another word about um, young people and about changing your party affiliation. You can do it at any time at votepa.gov. I've added this little typology quiz. It's, it's, it's short, it's pretty good, and it helps young people especially understand how their issues align with, with the different political party platforms. Um, all, many, many young people want to register as independents. There's no independent party per se in Pennsylvania. They can register as green, libertarian, or none, no, non, no affiliation, but they won't be able to vote in the primary if they do that. Um, the minor parties like green and libertarian and the political bodies like Keystone and forward parties may have candidates on general election ballots in the fall if they meet specific requirements. So remember, in the general election, any registered voter can vote for any candidate in any party, but it does add to the confusion. They can vote, anyone can vote in any election, even a primary, if there's a ballot question, referendum, or referendum, a constitutional amendment, or a special election. So we have to always make it a little confusing. This one's specifically for Allegheny County, where to return. So have a little more information for voters. Another option for online registrations, vote411.org through this nonpartisan platform of Rock the Vote. Using 411.org, eligible citizens can register from any state and they're routed first to vote to Rock the Vote. They'll do a few screens and they can choose to receive texts or email reminders. Um, that really helps citizens, especially young people get to the polls. And then they're routed to their own state's uh, voter portal. Once again, no worries about these uh, websites. Vote 411 and Rock the Vote will not share private information. For, vote 411, of course, is important, as we all know, for another reason. Many voters don't know how to find nonpartisan and reliable candidate information. And the League of Women Voters solves that problem. 
If the candidates respond, which we know has recently been a challenge, voters can find descriptions of the elected office, candidate photos, links to the candidates' websites, and they can compare candidates' answers to the league's three questions side by side. When voters type in their address, they'll find all the candidates on their ballot and they can create their own sample ballot, which I do every election because I think it's most helpful. And then that personalized list is sent to you by email and you can take it to the polls with you. So I'd like to show you a little bit of this video. This is, we call this walkthrough vote 411. This is one of the earliest ones we made. We made this in the PCTV studio and it has um, our lovely Heather Gray uh, doing um, uh, as our ASL specialist here. Vote411.org is your one-stop shop to get all of the election information you need. Finding nonpartisan candidate and voting information can be challenging and time-consuming. That's where the Vote411.org website can help. Let's walk through Vote411.org. There you'll find state-related voting so that just gives you a little idea of how that vote, that goes. That's it's not a very long video, but it's kind of, I actually had a student say they they thought that was a terrific video and they liked it. So that was helpful. All right. So finally, it's important to tell registered voters to be on the lookout for their voter ID card. About three weeks after registering to vote, this official looking envelope will come in the mail um, and that voter registration ID card will be inside. Most young people don't get snail mail, so they really need to look for this and keep it in a safe place. The voter ID card shows important information. It's, it's, so, it's so important to know municipality, ward and precinct, and it can be used as approved voter ID at the polls on election day. In Pennsylvania, approved voter and non-voter ID, and non-photo, I'm sorry, approved photo and non-photo ID is required for first time voters, or if you're voting for the first time in a new polling place. Um, and there's a complete list of approved voter ID at votepa.gov. Um, we also have it on our website. And again, help for uh, getting approved vote, uh, voter ID from votewriters.org. So poll workers are trained to help, but sometimes voters may be challenged about their eligibility. It's important for citizens to know that if they believe they're eligible to vote, they have the right to vote and they should not leave a polling place without voting, at least with a provisional ballot. The, this this uh, graphic has a lot of it, links, a lot of good information. It's Know Your Rights, um, and it has a nice link to provisional ballots. It's also on our um, in-person voting page. And um, there's also a section there, I believe, about moving, um, a little bit about poll watchers, so some good information. And also this election protection poster can be downloaded. Um, and those are both found on our explainers and graphics webpage under Civic Ed Resources in the menu. The Election Protection Coalition is there 24 seven. Um, they're not just there during elections, but they are especially important on election day. So you can talk to live operators really anytime with these numbers and the phone lines in other languages are also available. In Pittsburgh, uh, BPEP, the Black Political Empowerment Project provides training before elections to be an election protection worker. So I'm sure in your area, you, also, you have other organizations doing that also. That's, that's really great. Sometimes it's hard when, when people are new at registering voters, they don't know what to do or what to say. So I just have a few little, uh, you know, conversation starters. I, I find sometimes it's, it's good just to say, do you want me to check if you're a registered voter? Uh, people do lose track of this information. Um, so just a few ideas. Uh, can I help you find some nonpartisan candidate information? Uh, you know how to do this. I made a resource page for you, and I'm going to click on it. And then I'll try to make it bigger. But it has all of our videos for 2024. Uh, we have this new one about don't be cynical because we've encountered some cynicism. So we said, oh, let's make a video 
voting the whole ballot, two ways to vote early, making sense of the electoral college, um, PA online voter registration, that one I showed you. And then all of these explainers. Um, I also have that Pew Research link up there, center link, and a couple of websites. So you can download that and hopefully it helps. The videos I think are all statewide. I don't think anything there is really local. Um, I wanted to add a little bit in here because that other is so dry and this is more exciting. Um, we've been doing a lot of collaborations and I just wanted to show you some of our other resources too. Um, for each election cycle, Civic Ed and our website teams get together and we think about what are the big ideas that are emerging for a particular election. And this is a, these are examples of the graphics, explainers, and videos that we create for each election. Um, and I want to play this, this one about the Electoral College because it's just... Uh, there's a lot of confusion out there. Let me let me play this short. It's a very short Your video. vote, and every vote in Pennsylvania, is critical for the election of the President of the United States. The only election that is not winner-take-all or won by a popular vote is the presidential election. The U.S. founders made a deal to protect the smaller states with a complex system to elect the president using an indirect vote and the Electoral College. Pennsylvania has 19 Electoral College votes. The number of those votes is based on the number of U.S. Senators, always two for each state, and the number of U.S. Representatives from each state. So in Pennsylvania, we have 17 U.S. Representatives plus two Senators, which equals 19 Electoral College votes. But to win nationally, a presidential candidate must gain at least 270 Electoral votes. Each state has its own number of Electoral College votes. When a presidential candidate wins the popular vote in Pennsylvania, all of the electoral votes go to that candidate. The Constitution explains the role of the Electoral College, so learn more from reliable sources. Pennsylvania is considered one of five or six swing states, where the election is expected to be very close. Your vote will matter more now than ever in 2024, so make your voice heard by voting in the primary election on April 23rd and the general election on November 5th. find that totally confusing, but it's we felt, feel that's really good information. Uh, you can download this mail-in ballot um, flyer because we, we really emphasized over-the-counter uh, voting. We have found that students and also actually formerly incarcerated folks like to, they're already registered, but they'll go into the election office and apply for a mail-in ballot, uh, get their ballot, Fill it, fill it out and turn it in. And they basically have voted early. So we made a flyer, you can download that. And we are trying to pass that out at a lot of different places, especially in light that they made uh, primary day on Passover. So that's one reason we wanted to get that information out there. And then we also wanted to talk a little bit about voting the whole ballot, presidential elections, people you know, they, they want to go and vote for president, but our, you know, all the legit, the federal and state legislatures are up for grabs too. So we, we like to emphasize that a bit. We do have a video for that too. Through the increased attention that Pennsylvania is getting because of its status as a swing state, we have been asked to collaborate with various national student engagement organizations. And what I've learned is that a lot of these programs focus primarily on youth voter uh, registration, but they don't provide the context that we feel young people need to become informed active voters. You know, our nation's founders expected citizens to participate in our democracy. And for many years, we've been aware of this, you know, large civic education gap in our citizenry. So our main theme and focus well, for all of our leagues work through our website, our events, and our programs, including high school and college outreach, has been, has been to advance civic education across the lifespan for all citizens. Um, our schools and community web page talks about all of the pro programs we do uh, in civic ed. 
I have to talk about Joanne Moore, our high school outreach coordinator, who's responsible for this genius idea of the happy 18th birthday poster. Um, every now for two years in in August, end of August, we send this poster plus a letter to principals in and staff in five counties. And um, we've had some good results from that um, for people wanting us to come and do our, our presentations. We also have some fans in California that have duplicated this program. I know at least three leagues in California are doing a happy birthday poster. Um, Joanne also was a nonprofit um, administrator and she helped. I wanted to do a model, like a real model of our civic ed high school program. And she helped write that. We have, believe it or not, had about a thousand downloads of our model and of our birthday poster. So we're happy about that. During the pandemic, we became more aware of older neighbors who lacked reliable internet. We responded with printed voter materials for both schools and for our community. Um, over seven elections, we have will have us, uh, distributed twenty nine thousand ready set vote bags that look like this. Um, they have there we we distribute them in the community and to schools. And uh, thanks to generous funders and willing volunteers. The bag for 2024 has lots of um, good stuff in it. There's a voter registration application um, and that instruction sheet that I showed you. Um, we put in our, you know, a couple of graphics. This has roles and duties on the back. Um, we put in our little card that has websites and so a QR code for voter registration. I love the vote riders cards. We, we're getting, there's going to be new ones, I think, this year. Um, and so our volunteers as assemble them and then distribute them in the community. And we've we've um, distributed them to about 12 different organizations this, this time. A lot of people have kind of asked for them. Um, if Judy Clack was here, our voter service G VP, who I'm sure you know, she'd tell, she'd tell you about the years of partnering with BPEP um, to meet, to host meet and greets and forums. And right now, Judy and I are participating in a collaboration of 30 community organizations to jumpstart voter engagement. And the group is called VIP, Voting is Power, and we even have a logo. Pop-up reg uh, voter registration events on all around Pittsburgh are happening on April 6th, and three meet and greet events are planned. We've donated 200 plus Ready, Set, Vote bags to volunteers who are coordinating these events. I want to tell you about one more um, collaboration the with Pittsburgh YWCA. It's our second year to support a major junior achievement project. I don't know if you have BizTown anywhere near you, but um, we just love visiting BizTown. Uh, it's located near Pittsburgh, and after students uh, receive nine hours of instruction from their teachers, which includes a civic ed piece now, um, they come to BizTown like a... Um, a field trip, and they're there for like four hours. We recruit volunteers and we've given them graphics that describe voting and website resource postcards for their swag bags. About 5,000 fourth, fifth, and sixth graders pass through BizTown in a school year. And this is our second year of being involved with this project. And we just feel that it showcases the best of our country, these, these young people in action. They're just really cool to watch. Um, we had an event um, with another collaboration. Judy and I met every week since summer with a group of six organizations to plan and pull off this student-led adult-assisted Allegheny Youth Huddle. It happened Friday, March 15th. Um, believe me, there was a lot of blood, sweat, and tears with this collaboration, but it all came together with 60 students, mostly from Pittsburgh Public Schools, participating. It was a remarkably successful. Some students came up to us and said, you have to do this in the fall. Um, they were visibly fired up. Mayor Ganey and um, Superintendent Walters were there. And uh, the Post-Gazette wrote an article. They were there. And we also have a collaboration with WQED Film Academy, which is students who are learning how to do film with an artist in residence. Um, and that has been made possible through a grant from the LWVPA. 
um, which we totally appreciate. We're really excited about this partnership with WQED because um, they were all around the room on March 15th. We're hoping that we will have professional videos and social media content for release for the fall election. They're gonna be working in the summer, summer editing this, um, the videos that they took, all the video. And they're gonna interview students and have a backstory. It's gonna be great. I also included, uh, one of our partners is the Civic Center, and I included their workshop for running a drive. It's a little more specific about how to engage students in a school. So I just have that there as a link for you. Um, and, uh, and the last collaboration I wanna tell you about was something we talked a little bit about at the um, voter service meeting. Um, because of a grant from All Voting is Local, we're working with West End Power, it's Terry Miner, Spencer, the NAACP Pittsburgh branch, and then a few other league members uh, and myself. And um, we have um, our new little organization, a new little collaboration, and we're calling it IRO4C. Okay, and it is Incarcerated Re-Entering Outreach for Citizens. Um, and what we are trying to do is have a whole lot of new ideas, like maybe standing in front of the jail and talking to families as they come in. Um, we are um, always cautious when we provide information to have detailed information about legal status, um, but we wanna make some new ways to reach these individuals. Um, so, that we've had a, a nice relationship with the Allegheny County Jail staff. Last year, we tried this enormous program. We had volunteers trained, nine volunteers from the four or five different organizations. We had a script that was approved. We worked all summer. We had the dates and COVID hit and the jail was closed and they had another glitch where we couldn't go in. So the days we were scheduled to go, three days, 16 pods, nine people, it didn't work. We were very disappointed. We quickly made a video and the, the staff put that video on the uh, individual's tablets as mandatory viewing, which means they have to view it before they can use their tablets and do anything else, which we thought was terrific. Um, but the results still wasn't super wonderful. So we, we there's a lot of room to grow here. And right now we know that the uh, politics have changed. The Board of Elections is... Um, currently encouraging organizations to go in and register some voters before the deadline. So it's really rushed and hurry up, but I hope, I hope it works. Uh, it's all hands on deck for this one. We're going to, we need a lot of help. There's a lot, there's like 1600 um, individuals in the Allegheny jail, jail right now today. So that's it. I wanted to say one more word about all the work Ruth, our webmaster Ruth Quint is doing. Uh, she has all these new pages up and they're terrific. They are, some of them are statewide, um, but she always does such an amazing job with these. They have maps, they have, they. it's detail and hopefully there's something there that you can use. So the little information here about our websites, I put my um, email address on here and please, I would be happy to answer any questions you have. Just email me and um, I hope I can help in any way. Thank you so much, Amy. That was wonderful. Um, you know, the Pittsburgh League does such awesome, awesome work. So it's really great to hear about that and to hear about, uh, you know, the ins and outs of registering to vote, which is like the most important step to voting. Um, yep. So I think we have time just for a few questions, and I have a couple here. Um, so we got one that is, could a college student register to vote and cancel their current registration in their home state on the same day, like using the same link? I don't think so. I think it's a separate form. Okay. I'm pretty sure well, if you go on there, it's a form and it's like, cancel your registration. Yeah. Okay, great. That's really good to know because I know some students like to, or might might already be registered, but want to switch it to the you know right. where they go to university. So that's good to know right. for anyone talking to students. I'll have um, to go. I'll have to, I'll have to look it up now. Now that you said that, but yeah, <laughs> no worries. Uh, and then uh, another one is um, I'd love to hear a little bit more about how the Pittsburgh League has addressed 
uh, things around voter accessibility and inclusivity, especially for marginalized or disabled or underrepresented groups. So, you know, we we were uh, we had a nice relationship with the lady with the lady doing the ASL and we put those in some of our videos and then, you know, life happens and you get busy and then we we haven't really put done that again, but it was really help. We really liked that was helpful. Um, when, when Ruth and I were working on the website, we reached out to Vicki Landers, who is disability pride. And she reviewed our website for accessibility, gave us some suggestions. We fixed some pages, we made white backgrounds, you know, so we are very aware of some of the things you can do to increase accessibility. Um, all of our grants that all of our funders want us to go into areas with marginalized people. So, you know, everything we do has been a focus on first on schools that are under resourced uh, students that don't get this information. And um, that's that's where our high school outreach has always been focused. Um, and we do have schools that we go back to year after year. We have a nice relationship with, you know, we get this relationship with folks, but um, we're constantly trying to expand. Um, and kind of interestingly, from those high school posters, those uh, happy birthday posters I was telling you about, we know that all of our emails go to spam. And so we have taken to writing letters. So we write letters to principals and we put them in these tubes. I think sometimes they probably throw away the tubes too. I think we have to send the letters first. There's these things we, you know, we have to like be on the lookout. These tubes are coming. Don't throw them away. But um, we've got, I think, five schools in Westmoreland County that requested us to visit. And, and last year, and it's probably the same this year, uh, the two people that were, that wanted to go there all the time, clocked 40, 440 miles on their car because wow. Westmoreland's not close. <laughs> yeah, it's not close. But they did. They went to all these schools and they those schools, many of them wanted us back this year. So uh, that was that was a kind of interesting and, and neat. That's um, so wonderful. Disability Pride PA is a great organization yes. um, for anybody wondering. They do really awesome advocacy and work around helping disabled people get out the vote um, and they're always always willing to to form new partnerships so um glad to hear you guys you have worked with vicky too she's absolutely wonderful yeah. um and then our you know i think our last question and if you have any other questions we can always you know either email me and i'll pass it on to amy or email amy directly um the last question that i have is what is the biggest Thing that excites you about young people participating in civic life today? I, I have to say, we have when we've been in schools this um, this time, the the I don't know, just the atmosphere has been a little different. There's just so much skepticism and cynicism, and they just don't like those two old people at the top of the ballot, <laughs> and so that's been kind of disheartening but when we had this huddle it really uh was it just really fired us all up because um these students weren't students who were real familiar with all of this voting elections stuff and they really were visibly excited about talking about their issues and how that how government can help and government can work um and that really did fire us up. And I, what, one of my, from the very beginning of me, of doing this, it's been seven years that we've been going into high schools. And from the very beginning, we knew that we respected students' ability to understand crazy hard stuff. Um, I mean, I, I just, that's the way we approached classrooms. They want some depth. They want to understand things. They don't want just headlines. And so, you know, that's why we've always made civic ed part of things, because we just feel there's a gap there. And when you start telling them about things, they get very interested. We were just in a classroom and we had a sidebar about open primaries. Students just really wanted to know why in the world were 1.3 million voters disenfranchised in Pennsylvania. It just doesn't make sense. Um, they want things to change faster. That's what's hard. And it's it's you know, like changing the direction of an ocean liner and they just 
don't get that. And so that yeah. part of it's hard for young people. But um, we have faith in them and they give us hope. And that's why we're doing it. So they're awesome. They're mostly, I mean, they are amazing in the ability to understand things. It's just, yeah. there's so many, but this world has just gotten so, I don't know, dangerous and scary. And that's been changing since the pandemic. Before the pandemic and now has been a big change Yeah, in yeah. students. Yeah. Well, I think that's really lovely to hear. I think, you know, that I've, I've seen a lot of excitement from young people recently. And I know Brianna has from working on college campuses. So I think it's up to us to engage and capitalize on it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so They're definitely um, interested and yeah, excited about um, joining organizations like this. I agree. Well, great. Um, well, thank you so much for your time. I will give, you know, seven minutes back because I know some of PA has sun, which is great. We don't, but I hope some other people do. Um, just a few reminders and plugs from the state lead before we go. Uh, our next Ballot Box Basics uh, webinar will be on April 16th at 6 p.m. Um, and to other lovely Pittsburgh League members, we'll be talking about uh, mis and disinformation, particularly AI and mis and disinformation. So uh, it's going to be a part two to their previous uh, disinformation presentation. So we hope you can all join for that. Um, I'll send the link out in an email and it's in the chat. Um, uh, the PA League is also working with the Committee of 70 to recruit poll workers ahead of the Pennsylvania primary and general. So if you are interested in becoming a poll worker, if you know someone who's interested in becoming a poll worker, please send the link uh, that I put in the chat to them. And then the last thing, and I'm sure everybody already knows this, and Amy has already said it tonight, uh, the voter registration deadline is April 8th. And if you all haven't already registered, now you know how, which is great. Um, and if you are looking for nonpartisan information about your candidates, uh, and if you're looking for it online, I uh, really encourage you to go to vote411.org, which is the league's nonpartisan voter education tool, where you'll see information from candidates in their own words. So really direct from the source uh, information about your candidates. So. Um, that's all we have for tonight. Thank you all so much for coming. Oh, yes. No, I shouldn't do this, but I have to say one more thing. Um, I, I I have this these slides on our slide web page, and it's it's right there in the chat. Uh, www.lwvpgh.org/slides. Very easy. But I have a lot of all of our uh, slide decks for schools and community. So take a look at that. We okay. share everything. Well, great. Thank and I'll be sure to send all of this out in an email um, as well. Um, thank you. So thank you so much, everybody. And I hope you have a really wonderful rest of your evening. Bye.